Okay, welcome everyone to my continuation of what is geometric topology. Today I would like to tell you a little bit more about colorings, um, a linear algebra way to attack the coloring problem, because the coloring problem, as we will see, well, or as I will sketch, is not completely trivial. Um, and the kind of the solution, if you want, will be given by a determinant. I'm not sure, well, it's just the determinant that will give the solution is called the not determinant. Whatever. So let's have a look. And it's actually pretty cool. So linear algebra plus not theory, which is always a good connection. It's always just a really good linear algebra is great. And not theory is also kind of fun. Put both together and it will be a lot of fun. So that's what we will do. So I uh, remember from last time the coloring rules. So um, for the three color ability, for example, um, you either at every crossing had a monochromatic coloring or you had one of these uh, where every color appears, and it, such, something like this is bad. And then there was an example of the tre uh, trefoil. That's a very nice trefoil of the figure eight knot. And well, it's not, it, you can't color it with three colors, but it's not quite obvious to see. So you kind of need to play around a little bit, um, just try all possibilities. And trying all possibilities is usually not the best way of doing something, right? Try all possibilities, a brute force approach. I, I'm always using the brute force approach, but it might not be the best one. Um, and the idea is now to kind of still try everything, but in a linear algebra fashion. So you try everything in a smart way. And well, a priori, it's just not easy to decide whether you have this end coloring because it will be for a huge knot. Again, it will be kind of brute force. You need to test everything, not a good idea. Um, it would be much better to have some algorithm to decide very easily whether something is colorable or not. And turns out that you can, and basically you turn, as I said, the I need to do all possibilities into a linear algebra problem where you solve a certain type of equation. And you solve those equations using a determinant. That's how, but what the determinant is for. And the determinant tells you whether a certain system has a unique solution. Basically, that's what's going on. Okay, let's have a look. It's actually pretty easy, it's pretty nice. So here's, now it's really the trefoil, by the way. Here's my example, um, the trefoil knot. And what you do is you color all arcs or all segments of the knot. Um, you give it a number. So, uh, so here I have my segment C1, segment C2, the blue one, segment C3, the green one. And you also give the crossing some numbers. Um, so here's crossing one, here's crossing two, the blue one, the green one. And the uh, orange type crossing is crossing three. And you put everything in the matrix in the following way. So matrix associated to a knot. Um, so crossing one, crossing blue. So crossing green, crossing blue, crossing uh, whatever orange, whatever it is. Uh, segment one, segment two, segment three. And then generally you get this huge square matrix, a number of crossings, number of segments. Um, and you just read off a local contribution and sum of all of them. So whenever, I, we'll do that in an example life. So whenever something goes over, your arc goes over, it contributes two to the crossing. Whenever it goes under, it contributes minus one. And whenever it's not appearing at all, it just contributes zero. So let's have a look at an example here, for example. So this one is the green crossing. And I look at the strand that goes over, that gives me a plus two. And that's clearly, well, it's, it, it is just the C1 strand. So I put a plus two here. Um, but the C1 strand also goes under. It gives me a minus one. I put a minus one here. And the remaining strand is the blue strand, C2. So I put a minus two in the blue column. And this one is boring. It doesn't appear. OK, let's do another one, the last one, maybe. So we look at the a red crossing again. Blue, uh, blue, blue, very nice blue. Red goes over, red goes under, so two minus one. Uh, blue is not involved at all. Green is the remaining color. You write this down, very simple. You write this down, uh, you get a matrix. And matrices, well, it's a matrix, right? So now we have linear algebra. So you can associate this matrix MK to every knot in a very, very straightforward fashion. Just So what you very often do in this setup is just to you color segments and you color crossings and put everything together in some kind of matrix type fashion. And that's exactly what's happening here. Um, okay. And then, so here's another example. So let's try to do this as well. So this is a trefoil and a trefoil is very symmetric. So the matrix you get is also very symmetric. So let's just do one of them. So I did, what I did here, I just numbered or colored, whatever you want to call it. The segments again, I have segment number three, 
This is three. I have segment number one. I have segment number two. And I also numbered the crossing. So here's two, here's one, here's three. You get a three by three matrix. And for example, for crossing one, blue goes over. So you put a two, the other two go under. So you put two minus ones and so on. Um, turns out that the knot, because everything is kind of closed, will force the matrix to be degenerate. So there will be a linear relation among the columns and rows. And you can get rid of that by just getting rid of one relation. It's a little bit like cutting the knot open if you want. But simply algebraically speaking, you just get rid of one column and you just get rid of one row. You have a remaining matrix and you take its determinant. And I even haven't miscalculated here. The determinant of this two by two matrix is three. And that's what you call the knot determinant. Right? So the knot determinant, compute the knot matrix, get rid of one column and run row because the knot forces um, the matrix to be degenerate anyway. So the determinant will be zero. If you do that, the determinant could still be zero, but it might not be zero like in this example. Uh, in this example is three. So you get a number associated to every knot. And then the statement is actually a pretty cool statement. This is the following. So a knot determined by some projection is divisible by n. So the not determinant, if and only if it's divisible by n for any projection. So the, this definition a priori depends on the it depends on the projection, but still you get this result that it's divisible if and only as for any projection, and it's uh, if and only if the not has a coloring. So you can now check algorithmically whether not has a coloring, and that's pretty pretty cool. So for this guy, for example, you would write down the matrix. You check that the determinant is five, right? Three doesn't divide five. So it doesn't allow a three coloring. It doesn't allow a seven coloring either or an 11 coloring or whatever, but it does allow a five coloring because well, the determinant is five. That's clearly divisible by five. And actually the example I had all the time is a five coloring. It just uses four colors, namely in this case, uh, black as a, uh, the fourth color. So red, green, blue, and black. And you can identify them as numbers as I did here if you want to do the calculation and they will satisfy the condition on being a coloring. I mean, that's pretty cool, right? So you just associate an object of linear algebra and in linear algebra, you compute determinants. So that's kind of simple. And just the divisibility of the determinant tells you uh, how it's colorable. So if it would have something like three times five, then it would be colorable by a three, five and 15 um, and, and so on. So here five just tells you it has a five coloring Ooh, it has a five coloring. So that's a new result. Um, it's not quite trivial. Well, of course, if I just write down the coloring, it's not so hard to check, but to check it by hand is much uh, much harder. Um, and even worse, if you would need to check whether it has a 21 coloring, <sighs> quite a lot of cases to check by just computing the, the matrix. Well, that's much easier. And just check what the determinant is and check whether it's divisible by whatever kind of number uh, you're looking for. Okay. But there's still a catch, obviously. There's still a catch. So here's my running gag. So um, the, the determinant, the not determinant, the not matrix actually doesn't see the difference between mirror images. So those are the two mirror images, the left-handed and the right-handed trefoil. So they both have determinant three, which means the trefoil is three colorable, but not five, whatever, blah, blah, blah. Um, so you get this whole sequence associated to it. So it's three colorable. It's not five colorable. It's not, not whatever, blah, 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 blah. But this gets exactly the same sequence. So we still can't say anything about the left and the right-handed trefoil. So it's still not good enough, although we take now all possible colorings into account, and it's still not good enough to detect uh, the left or the right-handed trefoil. So strictly speaking, we still don't know whether they are the same or not. Anyway, so the coloring is kind of cool, right? It's a cool idea. It's pretty simple. And here an, was an algorithmic way to actually compute whether something is colorable, which is pretty cool. So you really just need to write down a matrix and compute its determinant and check what the devices of the determinant are, which is pretty straightforward. Um, and the computer can do it very easily. But it's not a perfect invariant. Why should it be? So for example, we can't distinguish the left and the right-handed. Um, trefoil. We can distinguish the trefoil from the figure eight knot, and we can distinguish the figure eight knot from the unknot because the unknot uh, still allows no coloring, and the figure eight knot, figure eight, we found the five coloring, so it's not the unknot. Ray, <laughs> again, if you build those out of rope, it's it's pretty simple to see, but that's not the point here, right? Uh, but it's not perfect, so we need to look for more invariants. In particular, I'm I'm a little get a little bit pissed here that we can't distinguish the left and the right handed trefoil. We should really be able to do that. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed the video, and I'll see you next time.